when you wake up, uh, start to scream, to sing, and uh, several times um, I heard him uh, sing the, the Watford song. Really? In his bed, yeah, really. Which one? Which one does uh, he sing? The, um, the since I was uh, since I was young. Yeah, since I was young, and uh, he just uh, he just start to sing this song. Uh, uh, when uh, when he wakes up, when he wake up, so uh, it's uh, it's funny. Christian, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Welcome to the offices of Football Manager. How's it been here? Is it strange? Yeah, quite strange for me. It's like uh, it's like my second home here because uh, I play a lot uh, a lot of time uh, the game and uh, discover. Uh, the people behind uh, behind the game, it's it's quite uh, quite good. So, Christian, this is football manager. Yeah. Is that uh, anything at all what you thought it might look like? Uh, I was expected maybe uh, less color. Yeah. But uh, it's a very looks, bright yeah, and uh, vibrant office. Very bright and so looks nice. And we'll have a chat here with Tom Davidson. Tom, how are you? Hi, Christian. Nice to meet you. Nice so to meet Tom's you. our PR manager, so he deals with the press, a lot of media requests. Yeah. Uh, gives out codes to other footballers that are coming at his door asking for the game. Um, you've been here for how long now, Tom? Seven and a half years. Uh, Seven and a half is, years. You know, it's a pretty short space of time compared to some of the people on that side of the board. But um, he spends most of his time playing the game. He's, yeah. He's literally playing it now. Yeah. He has to. He has to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's not his job, but he is here, so. <laughs> Talk to me about your journey with Football Manager. When did you first start playing? Uh, actually, it started before I can play because before I was watching uh, my uh, my brother, uh, who is uh, five years more than me, and uh, I was watching him playing Football Manager. So it started at that moment. I, maybe I was like 12, 13 years old, and um, and after, yeah. It's almost uh, 10 years, 11 years that I play, I play to the game, and uh, yeah, it's a good, uh, good part of my life. Were you like me? I used to play for hours on end, mm -hmm. and my parents would say, "Come on, Kevin, got to do your homework. Mm -hmm. Get off the computer." Yeah, me, me, I had to do my homework first, and after play Football Manager. But anyway, <laughs> when I go to my room, my my parents didn't check what I what I did, and sometimes I should do my homework, and I was playing a Football Manager. Um, did you always start unemployed or did a team pick you up? No, I always start uh, in a team. Uh, if not, the, the game is it's boring, you know. When you don't have a job, 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 you want to start straight in the, in the game. So uh, I like to, uh, to, uh, to do all the plans for, for the transfer window, like sending, sending the scout uh, in almost uh, every part of the world. Uh, try to build uh, my own stuff. Try to to assess my uh, my squad. And uh, yeah, if I don't start straight, it's not the it's not the same. I mean, we've got various bits and bobs dotted around, but what's quite nice and my favourite feature is the timeline that we've got down here. So it's basically our whole journey documented in these walls here. So starting off in '91 when the first papers were signed, all the way to our new um, our new office change up here. Yeah. So here we've got all departments, everyone sort of sat in their teams. We've got um, the match department, we've got features departments, literally every part of the game, there's a little team assigned to it. Are you always Watford in Football Manager? Uh, normally yes, but this year I change. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I took my, uh, my former team, Genk, uh, and I I just want to reach uh, to reach the Premier League for starting uh, a lower lower level. Yeah. And we all have a best season in our head, which we mm -hmm. had on Football Manager. What's your best season? Uh, my best season was uh, in the last game. I uh, I finished uh, four, I think, with Watford, and uh, we went to Europa League and we won the Europa League. So it's quite uh, quite impressive for for Watford, and I was. Uh, was really happy. Yeah. Um, when you're with Genk, do you sign yourself? Uh, to be honest, I, <laughs> I I always send my scouts to 
to have a report about me, to see if I have the level to play in any team where, uh, where I am. If uh, the scout said I don't have the level, I don't, I don't buy me, no. And what do you think of your stats? It's quite good, quite good. Uh, they, it, it improved a lot, uh, I think, as, uh, as me during the, during the years. And uh, I'm quite, uh, quite happy with, uh, with my stat because even when uh, I'm not managing myself, I go to check uh, sometimes the Belgium national, uh, national team and most of the time I'm in the squad, so I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. The conversion to becoming a defender happened at 23, which is very late in a mm. footballer's career. How did that decision happen? Uh, I was in, uh, in Open, in second, uh, second league in Belgium. And uh, two weeks before the, the start of the new season, uh, our captain at that time, who was central defender, uh, get uh, injured in a friendly game. And uh, the day before, the, the manager came to me and said, look, we are not going to buy anyone on, uh, on the market. And uh, you are tall, you are fast, um, you are strong in the challenge. And uh, I want to try you at this position. Just uh, try to enjoy. <laughs> I was, uh, I was shocked at that time. Um, I remember that the first call that I make was to my uh, my agent. I asked him to to find me a solution, maybe to try change a team. But nothing happened uh, uh, with uh, with this. So I I try to turn the turn the button in my head and try to, to be focused on my new, my new position. And um, I started uh, the first game of the, the season. We won 4-0. Uh, clean and, sheet. Uh, clean sheet, yeah. And uh, the striker of the other team was quite a good, uh, good striker at that, uh, at that time. And uh, he didn't, I, I think he didn't even shoot on, uh, on, the, on the goal. So, uh, at that time, I knew that I found uh, my, uh, my new position. This is Nick Madden, That's he's our uh, match producer. Yeah, all good, all good. Lovely that you came into the yeah. office for us today. Yeah, nice. So Nick's basically in charge of the match engine, correct? Yes, sir. yes, correct. So yeah. if ever you see someone score a worldy goal, yeah. or maybe you see a goalkeeper error or something, that's down to Nick's work and Nick's team's work. So if I'm losing game, it's it's, just, it's not because of your tactics, it's because of this man, yeah. I would say, if you're winning, it's all down to the game. You know, if you're, if you're losing, it's all down to your tactics. It's all thanks to me. When you were younger, you played alongside Benteke mm -hmm. up front, though. That's some fearsome centre forward partnership, you and Benteke. I wouldn't have wanted to be a centre half playing against you two. Yes, we were, we were in the same team uh, at, uh, at Malin. Uh, we played uh, six, six months together, but uh, unfortunately we, we never played a game together because it was always him, uh, him or me. But uh, it's not only about, about Benteke, I remember that um, in under 20 national team with, uh, with Belgium, uh, Kevin De Bruyne was uh, number 10, and uh, a game with um, with the under, under 21 with Belgium, uh, Thomas Meunier was uh, number 10 as well. Not bad. And uh, now, uh, now they are both in a, in a top uh, in top team, so uh, it's quite uh, it's quite strange uh, how uh, how the things go. In terms of your style as a defender, you're quite combative. You're quite abrasive. Mm. I would say you try and often to beat the centre forward up. Mm. But yet, I read somewhere that when you were younger, you tried judo, and you stopped doing judo because mm. you didn't want to hurt anyone. Yes, of course. Uh, in the life, I'm a person who doesn't doesn't want any problem, or I'm I'm, I'm the kind of guy who avoid avoid problem, avoid any any violence act or something like this. And uh, yeah, at that time, uh, I tried judo, but I said to my mother, "Why should I hurt someone who don't, didn't do anything to me?" So. I stop. Uh, I stop that, and I uh, and I uh, and I turn to 
and I turn, uh, I turn my head and I say to myself, uh, maybe I should try another, another sport. And uh, now in the pitch is uh, totally different. In the pitch, uh, especially in our situation now, you, you need to be uh, that, uh, that, uh, that aggressive. Uh, if you are not aggressive, it will be easier for, for the striker and you, you need to, to, show, to show them that uh, it's not going to be an easy day for them. On the pitch, you're so focused, you're so in the zone. Mm. But I read something that your wife said in the morning, you're such a morning person. Mm. Are you really bubbly and lively yeah. in the morning? Yeah, of course. And uh, she hates this <laughs> because uh, she's not like this. Uh, Are you like, up early, bouncing around? Yes. Uh, as soon as I open my eyes, the, the journey is on for me. The, the day is on for me. And uh, I'm, I'm uh, in a good mood straight. Uh, it's totally different from my wife. Uh, several times she, she needs to, to scream on me to, to calm down because uh, she's not, uh, she's not uh, awake at 100%. And uh, the funny thing is that my son is like this as, is like this as well. When, uh, when you wake up, uh, start to scream, to sing, and uh, several times, um, I heard him uh, sing the, the Watford song really? in his bed. Yeah, really. Which one? Which one does uh, he sing? The, um, the since I was uh, since I was young. Yeah, since I was young, and uh, he just uh, just start to sing this song uh, uh, when uh, when he wakes up. When he wake up, so uh, it's uh, it's funny. That's lovely. Then you say so you're in a really good mood in the morning, mm. but then when we see you at the training ground, you're very in the zone. You're very focused. I would even say you're quite insular at the training ground. Mm. You keep yourself to yourself. Sometimes you sit and eat on your own. Is that is that deliberate? Uh, it's how I, how I am. Uh, for for people who, who doesn't know me, maybe I I will look like um, uh, cl closed on me. Closed, yeah. Closed on me. But I it's, it's, I'm, I'm like this. Uh, even uh, even in some moment in my life. Uh, when you when you will, when you will see me in the street, you will think that I'm I'm not an open person. But uh, it's difficult to change at, at 28. Uh, it's nothing doing in in purpose, but it's just uh, just like this in uh, how uh, how I am. Yeah. You're one of the last to leave the training ground. The, the canteen ladies are always, yeah. where's, where's Christian? When's he yeah, coming yeah. to eat? Is that deliberate because you're quite laid back and relaxed, or are you, are you uh, getting treatment? I have, a, I have a lot of things to do after training, uh, especially uh, when we approach the game. Uh, I uh, almost go every, every day to the gym to do uh, some, um, some uh, prevention work, uh, also recovery work. Uh, so uh, it's true that uh, when the, <laughs> the ladies in the canteen see me, it's like, yeah, Christian is here, so we, we're going to leave, uh, we're going to leave soon. Yeah. I asked a couple of the players, teammates, and said, what can I ask Christian? Tell, give me a little yeah. insight. And they said, he's the worst dressed. They said, <laughs> I bet he has an Adidas tracksuit on. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe true. Uh, I think worst dressed is not the good word. It's just that I'm uh, always uh, wearing tracksuit uh, because uh, I know I come to the training ground after I go home. So what should I dress like? Uh, like uh, I don't know, like a model. I know some uh, some of these guys there uh, dress uh, and give 100% uh, when they when they dress in uh, in the morning and after to do what to come to the training ground and go home. So. For me, what's the point? I, uh, I have, uh, I have uh, a sponsor with, uh, with Adidas. They give me things for free, so what should I buy thing? <laughs> we got over this side is uh, a lot of the testers as well. So people that day to day play the game as much as possible to try and find different errors and different bugs. And then this is my department. So. This is your department, <laughs> mate. When you retire, you've got a job here. That's fine. You can do maybe a bit testing, a bit social media. Yeah. Help me out a bit, that'll be good. A bit more on your personality. I'm interested in you on social media because mm. you're quite a, a character, that character on social media. Is that a way you can express your personality? Uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, people don't have the chance to, to, to know the player. 
and uh, to to discuss uh, discuss with them. So uh, that's why I, I try um, as much as possible to 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 express my express myself uh, on uh, on the social media. Um, it's easier it's easier easier for me. Uh, but I have to admit that since I uh, I have uh, I have I have kids, I'm I don't have so much time to go on social media. Is there a, um, an emphasis or a desire to be quite fun on on there because you are very witty on on Twitter, in particular? Yes, I think we we don't have to take social media too much serious. Um, it's not the the real world. It's like a, a virtual world. So. Uh, we, 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 don't, we don't have to pay so much attention to what, what is being said on social media. Uh, so that's why I try to, to be, uh, when I can, uh, as, uh, as funny as that I can. But, you know, <laughs> some, some moments it's difficult to, to, be, to be funny. Yeah. A particular um, tweet that made me laugh I mm. wanted to show you was a recent one where we picked the the which player should be in the fantasy yeah. football team? Yeah, yeah. I put uh, I put this in um, because uh, because I was sad that I wasn't involved in the game, uh, not because uh, someone in uh, in the media media team forget me. No, it that's was, what we thought. We thought we'd upset you. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It, it wasn't it that way. It was more in that way. I'm I'm sad that uh, the weekend I will not be will not be involved. Yeah. Who do you like on social media at the club, on, on Instagram or on, on Twitter? Who's, the, who's good to follow or who's on it all the time? Uh, on, uh, on Instagram, I like to, to follow the stories of Andre Gray. <laughs> because he's got a good he, life, huh? Yeah, he's, he's, he has a very good life. Uh, the, the, funny, the funniest thing was that I want to see on his Instagram is when, he's, uh, when he puts the wee of, uh, of his dog. I find so funny that he, <laughs> that he spent uh, so much time with, uh, with his phone, with, uh, with his dog. Yeah. The decision for your parents to take you and your brother from Congo when mm. you were very young, that was a big, big decision for the family. Yes, of course. If uh, if they didn't do that, uh, I, I will not be here. Uh, I uh, I would not uh, have the, the life that I have, that I have today. Uh, the situation at that moment was really difficult. Uh, a lot of a lot of robbery, a lot of uh, violence. So they make that decision to give us a better chance to the life. And. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm proud of what they did for us because they, they left uh, uh, the, their family, their parents behind, the, behind them uh, just to give us uh, a good life, to, a good chance to, to the life. How bad were things in Congo? Did they, did they tell you some stories? Did they fear for their safety? Uh, yes, because uh, there were like uh, a robbery uh, where, uh, where we were living and uh, the, the people uh, took uh, all the clothes, uh, everything uh, in, uh, in our home. So and, uh, at that moment, they, they, they take uh, the decision to, to move. Then uh, it was uh, the, the, best, uh, the best decision for everybody. Given how you uh, grew up in Congo mm. and had to move, do you have to sometimes pinch yourself at how far You've come. You're a Premier League footballer, mm. and you've been capped by Belgium. Yes, of course. Uh, I spoke a lot with my friends about that. Uh, it's quite uh, unbelievable. Uh, in five years, uh, what uh, uh, how, uh, how my life changed. Uh, even when I was in first division in Belgium, I uh, I was dreaming about this, but I was wasn't thinking uh, I didn't see it coming so fast uh, yeah I was uh, I was dreaming about about the Premier League and I'm playing here I was dreaming about being uh, involved in the, in the national team uh, and I did this as well so yeah it's quite uh, quite amazing 
was the dream everything you thought it would be when you played for Belgium against Holland mm. for your debut? Yeah, that, that day was, uh, <laughs> was unbelievable as well. Uh, the funny thing is that I wasn't supposed to, to start the game and uh, just a uh, few minutes before the, the kickoff, uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent company had uh, a problem. So uh, I, had, uh, I had to start the game. Uh, first, uh, first cap for Belgium, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a derby. Uh, Holland, Holland, Belgium is a derby uh, for us. So it was an unbelievable day and uh, I will uh, never forget. Back to club football and just finally, how much does this club Watford mean to you? You mentioned your son mm. sings a song. You live in the town, don't you? Mm. Yeah, I live, uh, I live in the town. Uh, Graham Taylor would love that, that you live in the town. <laughs> yeah, but for me, it's, uh, to be honest, I always surprised when people are surprised that I said that I'm living Watford. For me, it's, it's, uh, it's normal. Uh, I'm living uh, 10 minutes from the, the stadium. Uh, uh, without traffic, 15 minutes from the from the training ground, so the, there is nothing to be surprised that I'm living in Watford. Uh, it's a, it's a good city. I, there is a lot of things to do. There is a good uh, good restaurant. Um, when you uh, when you have to to do some activities with the kids, there is always something to do. So uh, yeah, for me it was the the best thing to do for to avoid the, the London traffic and, uh, and to, be, um, to, be, uh, to be good with the family. Uh, I, found, uh, I found school for my kids, I found everything in Watford, so what should I, should I live maybe uh, 20 or 25 minutes from the training ground uh, if I have uh, everything, uh, everything at Watford. Do you get stopped? Do you get recognised for photos and uh, Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. And, um, yeah, it's, it's normal. It's part of part of the game. Uh, it's always uh, it's always a pleasure to 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 give this to to the fans uh, because uh, sometimes that at the stadium maybe it's more difficult to be close uh, close to close to us. So yeah, I'm always happy when uh, when this happens. Great. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. And let's see if we can get some free football manager stuff. Yeah, I I already have. <laughs> Hey guys, where are you going? Subscribe first. <laughs>